Hi everybody, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna follow up the previous video that we did on getting the image set up for OpenPlotter onto our SD card. We're gonna go use the next steps to do the basic configuration. So uh, this one is gonna be looking at OpenPlotter initial configuration. And I'm gonna do a kind of a, a two for one a little bit um, because in order to go record the process, of setting up the screen because it's on a different computer than I recorded on. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to access OpenPlotter remotely. So the first couple pieces of this video are going to be optional and probably not the way that you would do it. The way that you would do it for yourselves is just take a, a you know a keyboard and a mouse and plug that into OpenPlotter and then hook it up to an HDMI uh, display. So just like a TV. Uh, or anything else, but it's good to know because then you can go access it from a computer remotely uh, from that point forward, right? So the way I'm going to go ahead and show this first is I'm going to go use just a regular uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I'm not going to be using the Motissier hat in this video. I'm going to do it the, um, I don't want to say cheaper way, because, but I guess a little bit cheaper. Um, not much, but a little bit cheaper. Uh, we're going to do it with just a regular uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're going to be using an RTL SDR um, software defined radio uh, to capture our AIS. These are about 25 bucks, maybe on, uh, on Amazon. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, and it's not a bad idea to get one of these anyway, right? So you could, if you wanted to, right, without the Raspberry Pi, you could take one of these, plug it into your laptop. Um, and then set that up to, to receive AAS, because this is what we're gonna be receiving AAS with. Um, I've got it with the little antenna that I think it came with, this little tiny little guy. And um, that's probably not what you would use in real life. What you do is you just get a little adapter uh, for the SMA, I think it is, uh, connection that's on the, um, uh, on the SDR. And you'd plug that into a real you know, standard VHF antenna because it's it's using VHF to, to transmit AIS. So that's, you know, it's a nice way to go do it. So use a bigger antenna, you'll get better range. Um, I was hoping that I'd be able to go pick up some AIS signals from where I live. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not going to really be able to show you the results of this uh, because there's just too many buildings in between me and the, and the water. And, and VHF, of course, is, is line of sight. So uh, I'm not going to really be able to pick it up with this antenna. Uh, I'm going to be doing this all indoors. So the GPS also will not kind of come up on here, but I'll do a follow-up video where I go down to the, the marina and, um, you know, show you with it. And even with this just little antenna, you're probably going to get like a couple miles, um, you know, of reception with, with AIS. So it's, it's, it's not bad. So we're going to go ahead and use this. We're going to be using a little uh, hockey puck style um, GPS that you can get, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks or so, maybe a little bit less than that, 15 bucks on, uh, you know, on Amazon, you can probably get cheaper Chinese knockoff ones uh, on eBay and the like, uh, but very simple. Um, so yeah, get one of these. That's, that's your option. If, again, if you do the Motissier hat, it includes both of those things, right? So that's one of the, the things that just makes it simpler. You get less devices, uh, and there'll be a little bit less configuration. And the last thing that I'm going to go ahead and use, which you don't need to use at all, but you can if you would like to, is a USB cellular modem, right? So you plug this in and then the device gets access. And the reason why I'm doing that is because in this demo, I'm going to be using my home Wi-Fi, or actually I'm going to be using the hotspot uh, Wi-Fi that's running on OpenPlotter to connect to it. And uh, I want to go show the default configuration, but it'd be nice to have internet on it. Um, so it can get out to the internet. So I'm going to go plug this in uh, and use that. Um, now, you don't need one of these. If you would like to get one of these, they're pretty cheap. Um, you can go pick them up on, you know, uh, on Amazon. This is a, this is a Huawei. Um, and Huawei, you can get for unlocked, you know, for, I don't know, maybe 35 bucks or so. Um, my dog has wandered over. She's interested in Raspberry Pi as well, apparently. Um, so yeah, you can get one of these as well, and then you can actually go use your open plotter as a Wi-Fi access point for the rest of the rest of the boat. So that's the the nice thing about this is it serves multiple functions. And then lastly, um, I'm going to go use a uh, USB extension cable 
uh, just because I don't happen to have a USB hub handy, and it's difficult to kind of fit, you know, all of these all of these things in the four ports uh, on the front of your Raspberry Pi. Um, I would say though, if you if you add a lot of devices to the Raspberry Pi, it's pretty low power. Um, so these USB ports don't have a huge amount of power going to them. So it's nice to have a, a powered USB hub if you're going to be adding more devices than maybe that I'm just using here. Um, also, you just get four ports, so it would be you know kind of tough to use. Um, you know, USB keyboard, USB mouse, and on, then these three other devices going to be plugging in by USB. <clears throat> if you wanted to go add some devices to go, then input, uh, you know, NEMA uh, 0183 signals as well, you're starting to run out of uh, USB ports pretty quick. So one of the nice things is, is you can go use something like a USB hub with this. Uh, and most USB hubs are DC, so you just cut the, the little AC adapter part off, <laughs> just wire it up to the boat, uh, and they're probably 12 volt DC anyway. So that's uh, that's very straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of plug all this stuff together. And... Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and power it on, and I've already got the um, the uh, micro SD card plugged in, uh, so we should be pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to go plug all this stuff in here. Plug in my uh, where, where is this? Is everything okay? Get this. Actually, I might need to undo this cable. I was hoping I'd keep it nice and neat, but it's too thick that way, apparently. Sand that thing. All right. Get that plugged in. And then I will plug in this. I'm going to fit all these things on there. Okay. okay. All right. So that should be able to do it. So this is a bit of a convoluted mess and probably is not making for the best video in the world, but uh, I just wanted to show all the components first that we we're going to go use. Uh, and I'll show you how we get this all sort of set up. All right. So I've got our SDR plugged into this you know, long USB extension, and then I've got the um, cell modem, and I've got the little hockey buck GPS attached as well. And that's a little magnetic thing, so it's usually got to put down sticks on it, so that's good. All right, so I've got all that. And what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go plug this into power. So I'm still actually going to use this little, um, this is just a power brick, USB power brick. So I'm going to go plug all this stuff in. And then I'm just going to get this out of the way. So we'll let that boot up, which is what it's going to do as soon as you plug it into power. just going to go put that off to the side. So the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is we want to go download a program to connect to OpenPlotter. Right? So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to, uh, and I actually already have this downloaded, uh, but what we want to go do is we want to go to realvnc.com. Um, so realvnc is a program that you can go ahead and use to uh, connect to the, um, the Raspberry Pi remotely uh, from either a Windows machine, uh, Linux machine, uh, or um, you know Mac, All right? So it's going to be real VNC, All right? So that's the name of the program. And if you just do, you know, a uh, a quick Google search, it'll take you to this page. You go click on download. You go download it for Windows. Uh, you want to get the viewer because we're going to be viewing the Raspberry Pi. And you just go click on the download. You know, um, just depending on what version of Windows you have and all that stuff, it'll download it. And you should be good to go. So that's that's 
basically the first part. Um, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is basically uh, follow along with the initial setup for OpenPlotter. Um, so if you go to openplotter.org, it'll follow you, forward you to saleoog.com slash openplotter. So I'm going to go click on documentation. And this is going to go take us to the basically installation instruction. So um, you can actually follow along with this pretty well, and it will give you a basic overview of how to get started. Uh, what it doesn't unfortunately do is, is show you a couple of things that you want to look at in terms of integrating OpenPlotter with um, the, the GPS and, and things that you've plugged into it. So, yeah, so what you want to go do is you basically just want to go down to the Get It Started section, um, and it will basically walk you through the initial pieces. So what it's first showing you here is basically how to go ahead and, you know, format your SD card and get that set up. Basically the stuff that we looked at in the last video. They do it a slightly different way, but you know it's 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 very similar. So what we want to go ahead and do next is we want to go connect to Open Plotter, right? So uh, again, normally you're just going to go plug in your your keyboard and your monitor, right? That's that's pretty straightforward. What we're going to go do instead is we're going to go connect to it remotely. And the way that we're going to go do this um, is we're going to uh, basically connect to the access point that gets created for us. Um, so it's going to be Open Plotter. Is going to be your um, your wireless access point name, <clears throat> and the password, uh, much like an idiot would have for his luggage, uh, is one two three four five six seven eight. So uh, we're going to go ahead and connect to it with the Real VNC program. So I've already gone through the install on this machine for Real VNC, and it's basically just the kind of normal install that you would do for any other kind of Windows program. So you just basically follow the uh, instructions all the way through, and, and you're good to go. It doesn't install any spyware or any kind of weirdness like that. So you don't need to worry about um, kind of weird options and things. It's a fairly well-known program. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go uh, basically over to my networking settings. So this is in the bottom right-hand corner of my um, machine. Um, so actually, let me go see if I can do this to kind of give you guys a better look at it. Um, so I'm going to move this over here. And I'm just going to kind of zoom in, All right? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on, in my case, you see it's got um, a little uh, Ethernet connection, uh, but that's because I've got a, uh, a sort of desktop cable plug in as well. It may be a more similar sort of Wi-Fi uh, connection. So I'm going to go click on that, and then that's going to go bring up the list of wireless networks that I have available. Uh, now, I'm on a desktop machine, so it's it's a little bit kind of funky. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click on Open Plotter, uh, which is the Wi-Fi access point that's running on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go click on Open Plotter, and then I'm going to go click on Connect. And I've already put in the password because I've done this previously in a different setup. Um, so it's it's already remembered my you know password of, of uh, not password, but the um, the access code. Uh, of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, All right? So it's just going to go ahead and connect to that. <clears throat> it is going to take a, a couple seconds to go do that. Um, it's not, you know, again, the fastest machine in the world. Uh, and, you know, it just takes a few seconds to go connect to the, the access point. So we'll give it a few seconds. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's the Raspberry Pi itself or if that's machine. Um, so it's saying that it's got no internet um, because that, that wireless network is sort of just set up as a, you know, uh, a way to get to open plotter, right? At least initially. So we've connected on there. So now I'm going to go back to my previous kind of view. Uh, and we're going to hopefully be able to go see that I've got my, my full desktop over here. So now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go open up the real VNC program. So I'm going to go down to my uh, menu and I've got VNC viewer over here. And I'm going to go right click and just delete that connection because I want to show you guys how to actually get to it. So I had sort of a saved connection there already. So um, when we go ahead and look at Open Plotter, one of the things that we want to go sort of see, I don't know if they show it here exactly. Uh, do they? Now let me go up over here. I'm going to go to the network. And the idea is it's going to have an IP address that's going to be set up uh, to be, oh, because I did this in diagram mode. Uh, so we go click on whoops, uh, headless. Um, basically, it's going to go say that the password is 
or, or open plotter is the Wi-Fi network. This is the password. And it's going to say that the IP address of the system is 10.10.10.1. I'm going to go over to my little diagramming thing. I'm going to write that down again so it's hopefully big enough for you guys to see it. Uh, so the IP is equal to 10.10.10.1. And our Wi-Fi is open plotter. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as the the SSID and, and and code to go ahead and get into that. So now I'm gonna open up real VNC again and I'm gonna go pop in the address ten. Dot ten, dot ten, dot one, and I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And now it may pop up a, a message saying you need to go accept this key. If it does, that's completely fine, right? So don't worry about that at all. That's completely normal. I've already accepted it, so it's it's not going to be an issue. So the next thing that we want to go ahead and take a look at is if I go move this over here, um, as you can see here, that's prompting me for a username and a password. This is really easy to remember what the default username and password is. The device that we're using is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so the username here is going to be Pi, P-I, and the password is going to be Raspberry. All right, so if I go click on the little eye icon, you can see that the password here is Raspberry. So I'm going to go click on Remember Password, and in this video, I'm not going to change the user's password and I'm not gonna change the name of the user that you're logging in with, but it's a good idea to do that, just like any other computer. You don't wanna go leave it with the default username and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK, and then you can see that we've got this tiny, tiny, tiny little screen. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little screen because it defaults to a really low resolution. Um, and if, for this to be really be kind of usable, we need to go change that. So one of the first things we're gonna go do is we're gonna go up here to the, the little Raspberry menu. Um, and I know that sometimes you guys can't see my mouse. It's a little weird with the screen recording. I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on the, the Raspberry menu over here on the, the top left. And we're gonna go down to Preferences. And we're gonna go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. So I'm gonna go click on that. And then this is gonna go come up in a second and we can go see that there's uh, a set resolution button, right? Um, so, I'm gonna go set the resolution and I'm gonna go change this uh, to 1024 by 786, right? So I'm gonna select that uh, and I'm gonna go click on OK. Now the issue here is, is that part of the menu, or, you know, part of this the screen is off of the, <laughs> the screen here. So one of the things you can go do is, I think it's the Alt button. Yeah, if you click on the Alt button, um, uh, and it might be the, the Option key on a Mac, um, if you go click on that, you can actually go uh, left click on the window and move it. So you can just go click anywhere and you can go move it up. So I'm then gonna go click on OK. And it's gonna say, do you wanna go reboot now? And I'm gonna say yes. So I'm gonna get disconnected while the machine reboots, uh, which is probably pretty obvious. And that's gonna take a few seconds to come back up, maybe uh, a minute or so. Um, so once that comes back up, we'll be able to go reconnect to it and we'll have a, a much larger screen to kind of work with uh, so we can go ahead and actually see things better and we'll have you know enough room to, to run real programs and be able to see uh, kind of everything. So we'll give that a few seconds to go connect and um, you know once that comes back up we'll just have to do a couple other things uh, to go get our devices working uh, and we should be more or less good to go. So one of the ways we can tell um, how how long it's going to take to, to come back up is we'll see this open plotter sometimes disappear and then come back online. So I'm going to go click on that again and say connect. And if it's back online, it'll, it'll let us reconnect to the device. So we'll give that a few more seconds to, to load. And I think that's probably off the screen. So we'll go pull up the main screen over here. So I've just clicked on the, the Wi-Fi, and, um, uh, looks like I am connected to open plotter again. So you can see, Boom, it just popped up the window. And this is now a lot more you know, viewable and usable. So if I go back over here, you can see that if I make this a little bit smaller. So 
right? We can now see that we've got the full sort of Raspberry Pi display and we got a lot more room to work with. I've got a really big monitor. Um, so this is, this is actually, you know, sort of a, a kind of a no, more normal size display. All right, so that's the first thing. You can see that it sort of ran through some, some steps. We had this window kind of pop up. Um, that's Open Plotter basically getting itself set up. Um, and if you see that there's a couple little things, there's this play button and there's a stop button. If you hit play, it basically runs through a series of actions where it starts things and such. So uh, what we want to go do uh, is we want to do a couple different things. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over to the Raspberry Pi menu again over here in the top left. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go down to preferences again. And it can be a little bit slow sometimes. That, that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to go to the Raspberry Pi configuration. And it's going to go pop up this, this window here, which you can see, which is a lot larger now, which is, which is nice. So I'm going to go to uh, basically just kind of look through a couple different things. Uh, I'm going to go to interfaces. That says that up. So this is fine. We just want to make sure that we have the VNC piece enabled. Uh, I'm then going to go over to localization. Da, da, da. So that looks okay there. Um, and I'm actually going to go do one more thing, which is basically a very similar version to the command line version of that. So I'm going to go preferences. And I'm going to go to the old raspy config. I'm going to go open that up. And you can see that we've got this little menu down here. And basically all I want to do is I just want to make sure that we have the full amount of space that we're supposed to have. So I'm going to just go arrow down uh, until I go to advanced options. And I'm going to hit return. It should take us into that menu. Uh, and I'm going to go to expand file system, which is the first option. Uh, so it might be a little bit hard to see, but literally I'm just going to hit return uh, once that opens up. And it's going to say that the partition has been resized uh, and that we'll have this be enlarged on the next reboot, which is, which is exactly what we want. All right, so I'm then going to hit tab, which takes me down to select and hit tab again. And then I can go ahead and hit finish. That's going to ask me if I'd like to reboot now. Uh, I'm going to say no, uh, but the next time that it reboots, it'll take a little bit longer because it's going to be uh, resizing our file system to make sure that we have uh, all the space that we need. So, all right, we're getting there. All right, so we basically have our um, our system set up, so we can go log into it remotely. Um, it's on, it's running, and I'm going to go basically show you guys these little icons. So the first icon with the anchor is Open Plotter. Um, the next icon to the right, uh, if it pops up there, is uh, going to be sort of our Signal K messages, which we talked about in the previous video. Uh, we've then got a little, um, you know, magnifying glass, which is for diagnostics, uh, and then we have a button for SDR. So the SDR con connects to our software-defined radio and basically manages our software-defined radio settings. So if I go click on that, it's going to go pop up uh, a couple different things. And the first button that you see is enable AIS reception. So we're definitely going to want to go do that. But what I'm going to go do is I'm just going to go show you that this in fact is connected and it can go see it. Now we don't have any audio set up forwarding from that machine. Uh, so that won't be recorded. But I'm going to go click on this little radio button over here, which is going to be uh, GQRX, uh, which is going to be opening up a little program that allows us to go ahead and uh, basically interface with uh, all of the um, kind of the radio spectrum stuff that it can pick up. Um, so it's going to say, what device are we using? And I'm going to go down to, uh, in this case, uh, the card that I'm using is a Realtek uh, RTL SDR card. So if I see this guy show up over here, we've got this Realtek RTL blah, 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 serial number kind of thing. Uh, that's the card that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Uh, and then I can go ahead and... Uh, so it's going to say, what's the default audio? I'm just going to leave that at the default. No need to go ahead and change that. Um, so, oops, go back to the default over here. <clears throat> and one of the other things that's sort of worth noting about this is those RTL SDR cards um, can receive a single sideband, VHF, uh, ham radio, can't transmit, but they can receive all those things. So one of the, the other videos that I'll probably make at some point a little bit down the line is uh, receiving weather facts uh, with that card because that's another really 
nice benefit of having this, this system is that, you know, for $20 and a little bit of wire, um, you can go ahead and, you know, receive uh, single sideband, which means that you can go ahead and receive uh, weather effects, which is, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And then this should be able to go pop up this window. And this is basically showing us that we've got our, uh, this is sort of our, our tuner interface, right? So this is basically a digital uh, ham radio set uh, or ham radio receiver set, I should say. So I'm going to go to um, configure the IO devices just to make sure that this is okay. It's set the right one, right? So it's still saved that. And then I'm just going to go click on this play button. And, you know, you can see that we're getting some, some signal here. So I'm going to go change this over from AM uh, to FM. And um, I'm going to kind of scroll through the spectrum, see if we can go find anything. I'm going to change the resolution a little bit because the Raspberry Pis are a little bit slow for actually listening to audio. So I'm going to go change this to 4096 into the default. I'm going to change this to a lower sample rate of like 15. You don't really care about this. I'm just showing you that the that this the 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 device is actually working, right? So we're getting a, we're getting some signal from this. Um, and I'm going to go try to see if I can go zoom in down here. I'm just gonna well, I'm gonna try to scroll through the signal to see if I can go find some something to kind of just indicate that this in fact is actually working. It might be helpful to sort of bring the antenna up here a little bit higher. All right, well, I don't want to get derailed too, too much, but the idea is that you can see that there's some changes in the signal, which means that this is, you know, picking up something. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And then instead of looking at that, I'm going to go over to here to enable AIS reception. So that's basically the first bit that you need to go do. Uh, we can then go ahead and close that out. Uh, and then once we you know, have this somewhere that it can go pick up AIS, uh, we will be able to go ahead and do that. So the next thing that we want to go do is we want to go click on this little anchor. Um, so this anchor, again, is going to be uh, the open plotter kind of uh, interface. So what we're going to go do in this section uh, is basically just make sure that it knows that we have a um, a GPS attached to it. So we've got a USB GPS. So once this opens up, uh, we're going to be able to go ahead and scan for our GPS devices. Uh, and then we'll be able to go ahead and basically have that GPS uh, set up to be repeated on uh, our NEMA, right? So you can see here that we've got dev uh, TTY USB zero. So one of the things that they recommend that you do uh, is that you specify what it's being used for. So um, we can basically change the name of the device. So here it's dev TTY OP uh, underscore, and I'm going to go put uh, GPS. All right, so I'm just going to go manually type in GPS there. And what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go click on the assignment, and we can go assign this to be a type of device. Right? So um, this could be you know, a Signal K multiplexer. This could be an interface to a Pi Pilot device. Uh, this could be CAN USB, which is used for, um, you know, um, um, you know, all, all sorts of different stuff. Um, um, NEMA 2000, basically interface multiplexer for NEMA 2000, as opposed to um, NEMA 0183. Uh, but we're going to go do GPSD. So I'm going to go ahead and select GPSD. And then we don't need to go ahead and select the BODs. Um, we can go ahead and remember it by, uh, by vendor, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go leave that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. All right. So basically what this did is it says that this is now something that we know about. Um, and we can go ahead and get this information uh, other places because this is going to be forwarded over internet protocol now. So if I go to the network section over here, you can see that this is where A, we can go ahead and change uh, our, um, our Wi-Fi settings close that. 
um, and you can change the password for your Wi-Fi. So that's one of the things that you probably will want to go do. I'm not going to go do that here, but you could go do it. So the other thing that we're going to go ahead and see is we've got a couple different things uh, sort of listed on this, this section. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see them all. So we've got basically the IP address uh, on our um, open plotter Wi-Fi network. And then we also have the 192 uh, IP address we're using for um, our, our little USB stick, right? So those are the two IP addresses that we have. Um, and then we also see that we go to 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 colon 1011. I'm going to go copy this. Right? Um, and what that is, is the IP address that we can get all of our NEMA information on. Right, so all of our NEMA 0183 information is going to be um, repeated on that interface. And because we have a GPS, um, it's going to be taking the GPS from that and then rebroadcasting all that information as a NEMA string. So at this point, we're pretty much kind of good to go. Um, I think there's maybe a couple other things. So if we had uh, the Motissier hat, uh, that's all. We could go ahead and go down here and select that and basically enable it. Um, we can go ahead and look at, you know, uh, kind of other kind of stuff that we, we have here. I'm going to go leave all that kind of blank. Um, the other thing that you might want to go do is do an update. I'm not going to do that right now um, because, you know, it's, um, it's a, during sort of a demo. I don't want to you know, <laughs> wait for this thing to update to uh, a huge section. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this off. I'm just going to go close this window out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go open up OpenCPN. And all we really need to go do now is we need to tell OpenCPN to talk to that IP address, um, you know, 10.10.10.1, which is our IP address on this uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, to get our GPS information and any other things that are going to be rebroadcast via NEMA. So I'm going to go uh, make this full size so we get a little bit more real estate. I'm going to go click on the settings button. And what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go over to connections. And so we have display, charts, connections, SIPs, user interface, plug and so forth. So I'm going to go here and click on connections. Um, and in fact, you see that this is already set up. So we're going to localhost, which is another way of saying this machine, uh, 10.11.0. So that's, that's it. You're good. Right, so uh, for for me, obviously, I'm uh, I'm inside uh, on the first floor of a of a building um, that has you know multiple stories above me. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not going to be able to to get any GPS reception indoors here. Uh, but I've I've tested this before, same kind of thing. Just took it outside, and it was able to go pick up my my GPS location. And um, you know, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna do that right now because uh, I don't feel like putting the exact coordinates of where I live on the internet. Uh, but um, I don't mind doing it with my boat. So what I'll, what I'll probably do in another video uh, is just kind of show this actually working. Um, and then basically what I'm going to go do is I'm going to do more or less the same thing in another video uh, where I just go, you know, show the Motissier hat, plug it into a different um, Raspberry Pi and, um, you know, hook it up. All right. So that's, that's, that's pretty much it. So, that basically is the initial kind of steps of getting your uh, chart plotter. Um, another, actually, before I, I kind of um, stop, um, if I go pull up the, the web browser here on this machine, I can actually close this window out real quick. Um, if I go open up the web browser, it'll take a couple seconds to, to load. This is going to be one of the areas where having the Raspberry Pi 4 device um, is going to make things a little bit nicer just because it's faster. You can see that we've got some, some bookmarks uh, already set up uh, over here. Um, these are, are basically going to be um, just showing you that you can go connect to this machine uh, and you can go ahead and browse its interface. So basically, it's going to be listening on port 3000. Uh, so it's going to be 10.10.10.1, 3000. These are already saved for us. I'm just going to go pull up the instrument panel um, and you can see that this will just take a second to load uh, and then it will it'll come up over here. So we get localhost 3000, I can say connect. And then at this point, we can see all of our 
you know, basic charts and stuff and things like that. So uh, nothing really interesting and useful <laughs> yet because, um, you know, we're, uh, we're not receiving a GPS. Uh, we're not moving. Um, you know, our AIS is too far away. Um, also, this one happens to look a lot better on your phone if you're, you know, accessing it remotely. Um, and then we have the other kind of, you know, utilities and stuff that are, that are installed by default. So you can play around with these, get an idea of what's going on, get your nice little gauges. Um, and I think the KIP is the, the signal K stuff. So yeah, this is sort of your main kind of dashboard that most people look at. And then you can go see all the different kind of stuff that we have here. So we can look in the, the, the web-based sort of chart plotter, chart plotter view, which again is, is nice because you can look at it, this on any device. Um, you know, and again, obviously we don't have, you know, any of this kind of stuff set up. So, um, you know, it doesn't know where we are at the moment, but once the GPS was working and all that kind of stuff, um, and if we had the AAS uh, enabled, um, it would actually be showing AAS targets and where we are on this, uh, this little map, which makes it really, really useful because you can go, you know, access this from, from any device that you have that's uh, on your, on your Wi-Fi. So <clears throat> that is pretty much it. Uh, the one thing I would give you guys a little bit of a note about, um, just as sort of a reminder, this is a, a an actual computer. So one of the things that you want to go do is when you are done using it, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, go and shut it down uh, just like you would with uh, any other computer, right? So that's, a, that's an important thing. You don't want to just go yank the power out. Uh, you want to go uh, turn this thing off nicely just like you would with your laptop or any other kind of desktop machine. So we're going to go shut this guy down. And that basically is your little overview of how to go do the initial kind of basic steps to go set up a Raspberry Pi. So there's a few different steps to it, but it's pretty straightforward and, uh, and not, too, not too bad, really. Um, so hopefully that was useful. Um, and I'll do probably a couple more videos uh, on this in the, the not too distant future. Sorry it's taken so long to, to sort of post an update to, um, to this. Um, I wasn't really sure about how to uh, go about doing the screen recording aspect of the, the Raspberry Pi until it occurred to me just to use the, uh, the VNC interface. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if these are, are useful uh, to you guys. If there are, give some comments you know, in, the, in the video below. Um, you, know, you don't need to, to like or subscribe or anything like that because I'm not really trying to make this a channel that you know, people are, are following, uh, but, uh, you're welcome to subscribe. If it's, if it's of interest, I'll probably put some more videos on here. Uh, once we go through the initial open plotter stuff, but, uh, probably not a ton of stuff on this channel. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go close out the video and then hopefully we will see you in the next part. Uh, we actually show you guys, um, you know, AS targets and the GPS working. And then, you know, also the, the Moticio hat and how to go attach that and maybe a couple other things. Um, so that's basically it. Have a good one.